My guest today is um, Miss Trish, and I want to say it's Tonaj. Tonai. Tonai. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's funny because I'm having a little bit of a speech impediment when it comes to people's names. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Trish Tonai from the Toronto area, I'm going to say. Yes. And today we're going to have a conversation around stepping into our greatness and owning the potential that we came into this world with. Um, and now is such a great time to be having these conversations to elevate positivity and potential and possibility because it's so easy to just sort of get um, weighed down with the, the situation that's going on with the coronavirus for sure. So I um, am a life coach out on the other side of Canada on Vancouver Island. And by the way, you're all welcome to come out and visit me once we can hug again. <laughs> Stay where you are until we can hug again. And I have been coaching for the past four years professionally, um, retired from the fitness industry, which I had been in for 30 years, loving what I do, loving sharing the skill set, especially with women who are ready to sort of step into and embrace the beauty of who they truly are and how they came into this world. So with Trish, I'm just going to give everyone a little bit of background information about you, Trish, and then we can have a conversation. So Trish is an entrepreneurial coach, an author, and a speaker who speaks on mentorship. She's published two books, Breaking Barriers, 10 Entrepreneurial Women Share Their Stories, and A Diary of Change, 12 Personal Tools. With a love for writing, she has co-authored a complimentary magazine, W2, which equals wealth and well-being. She's the blog host for the hashtag Share Your Stories series, so you'll wanna check into that. She's a master coach, so it is really, truly an honor to have her here with us today and a speaker on the top topic of mentorship. She's also an entrepreneurial coach and she works with individuals who are ready to scale and grow their business to the next level of success. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My honor. Um, I want to kind of segue your background into the conversation that we're having today. So sure. I'm just curious if you would share with us maybe just an over, like in a nutshell, your story and how you came to be where you are. Sure. Well, you know, it's really funny, Mia, because I had no idea that we both were in the fitness industry. Um, I'm actually a certified personal trainer, um, and I became a personal trainer in 2008 after I had um, sort of gone through corporate burnout. So it was sort of my response to uh, trying to put a little bit more me time into my schedule. And I had closed my marketing and communications business at that time, and I went into business consulting. And it was while I was doing business consulting that uh, one of the gals that I had been mentoring came up to me after my contract was complete and asked me if I'd ever thought of being a coach. And I thought, oh, good God, no, really? Another thing to learn? And, <laughs> and at that time, uh, I was just going off to Harvard Law School to take a course in mediation and dispute resolution. And so when I came back from that, I thought, hmm, maybe she's on to something there. And I got into the business of coaching and became a master coach. Ah. And uh, yeah, and in 2019, I started the Share Your Stories guest blog series because I was going out and speaking on mentorship and I was hearing from so many amazing entrepreneurs who had some great stories. And I thought, what sort of platform could I start that would give everyone an opportunity to increase their visibility? So I started the guest blog series last year, segued that into its own website in January of this year. And we now have over 150 international stories online. Wow. So far. Yeah. yeah. So that's sort of how I came to be. So I actually super, super cool. So I hear that you have pulled skill sets from several different areas and kind of married them all together into one incredibly powerful toolbox. Well, thank sharing. you. Thank you. Well, I've been an entrepreneur since 1993. So I started when I was two. And so, um, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a wonderful journey. Prior to that, I had uh, quite a robust corporate life. So I was a national buyer for Eaton's and oh, a retail wow. consultant for De Beers, a diamond mining company. Wow. And uh, I used to use a joke when I was speaking that I was downsized twice by the time I was 30, and that's why I'm so short. Um, so I, I sort of, as you say, took the skills and experience that I'd acquired in all of those other roles and now sort of combine them into a toolbox to help other entrepreneurs break barriers to their own success. 
I yeah, remember amazing. what it was like, you know, way back in 1993, I say that um, when I first started, a mentor wore a blue suit and a red tie. Uh, business consulting was in its incubator stage and nobody had heard of a coach unless it was part of a sports team. Yeah. So thankfully times have changed and uh, here we are now where there's lots of opportunities to sort of share, step into our power, own our story and help others to sort of achieve their level of success. I, I totally agree. Well, now you have piqued my curiosity. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm only five foot four. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty tall. Well, it is. It is. But I'm the five feet. That's true. I'm the shortest one in my family, though. So I've heard the short jokes my whole life. So I had a bit of a complex for a while there about how short I was until I realized that, you know, the average female is only around five foot six. So I thought, hmm, that's not so bad. Well, and Mother Teresa wasn't even five feet tall. Look how that's what a true. powerhouse she was. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You know, I had a really interesting um situation that occurred for me that drove me into the coaching industry because I, I had absolutely no clue about coaching, none whatsoever. And when I retired from the fitness industry, I sold my last company, which was a, a post rehab studio. And I took a year off and I thought in that year, the universe was going to tell me what I needed to do for the final chapter of my working life. And the universe was like really slow, was not <laughs> my question. So I did what most people do in this era. And I went onto Facebook and asked people, what should I do? <laughs> and I got all, I got flooded with messages saying, you should be a life coach. You should be a coach. You should be an executive coach. You should be a... So I'm like, oh, clearly I should be a coach. So I thank you to everyone and went to my computer and went, what's a coach? And then long story short, uh, ended up, you know, doing a year, actually a year and nine months of training and Voila. You so are. now I've married all the skills together as well. <laughs> and actually one of my uh, mentors was Dr. Judith Glazer from the conversational intelligence. I got to take her last course before she passed away the month, a month before the course ended. Wow. So I feel so honored that it got to be part of that last program with her. Well, you know, it's really amazing because lifelong learning is part of our journey, right? So, um, you know, I'm a certified EQ coach, um, of course, went to Harvard for mediation you know, certified personal trainer, you kind of wrap all that stuff into one big package and sort of say, you know, it really is a holistic approach to what we do. As if there's one thing I've learned in being an entrepreneur for all of those years is you can't have one without the other. Wealth and well-being go hand in hand. And uh, unless you're kind of keeping your eye on the ball in both of those different areas, then there's a recipe for some downfall. And uh, that's what we want to avoid, right? We want everyone to be happy in their chosen career. Absolutely. And, uh, and excel at it and be able to share their passion. And if we can help just a little bit, make it a little easier for someone else, then I say I'm paying it forward. I I figure I'm in the autumn of my career. So I haven't hit the winter yet. So I figure <laughs> uh, I will help people to, uh, you know, break barriers because we all have them. You know, we stand in our own way lots of times, you know that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and funnily enough, one of the ladies from the book, um, Breaking Barriers, we've now collaborated and we have an online education uh, resources program for entrepreneurs. Um, Perfect. Yeah, it's either self-study or a mastermind or coached. And um, we're actually targeting it towards coaches and consultants. So they have content to share with their clients. That's fabulous. So, well, the thing that, that, that's so cool about all these interviews um, that I've been fortunate enough to have with these incredible women is that it, the time is now. Women are, are literally starting to step in and recognize the amount of potential that lives within them right. and that we all have a, an opportunity to take that greatness out into the world, which is basically what this conversation is about, is about I, I, I truly have this belief that we all basically have the same purpose and that is to own the greatness of who we are when we were born into this world yep. before we learned that we weren't perfect. The only thing that makes us different is how we access it and what we do with it. Right. So that's one of the things that I just love about these conversations is I've always felt that basically we all access our greatness through one of four portals, either love, peace, joy, or freedom. And through these conversations, I've learned, oh yeah, there's also the acceptance door mm -hmm. and there's also the vulnerability door. Mm -hmm. So my first question to you is, how do you access your, what, what door do you use to access your greatness? 
You know what, I would have to say authenticity because uh, for me, there was a, a lot of time when I was an entrepreneur in that marketing and communications business and I was chasing the next big sale, right? When, when was the next, when was the next new client? When was the next new initiative? When was the next new marketing program? And sometimes, you know, those strategic alignments didn't kind of marry through your own lifestyle choices. And maybe they were, you know, uh, selling a product or service that you didn't feel very passionate about. So when I made the flip the dial into business consulting and coaching, I thought, ah, now I have an opportunity to really be authentically me and to try to share a little bit about myself that maybe in that professional environment where it wasn't cool to let your hair down and kind of be funny or and wacky or really show your true self. You had, you know, a pretty rigid road to follow. And I think that's changed quite a bit. You know, we now have an opportunity to be a little more authentic. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think it's authenticity. That's mm -hmm. the portal that I'm sort of using right now. Um, because it's, it's been a, a rough road, you know, being an entrepreneur is not an easy thing to do. Nope. Um, and certainly I wouldn't have made as many mistakes as I made along the way if I had someone to help mentor me. So now that I'm at this stage in my career, I actually have a business coach, I have a speaking coach, I have a mentor. And uh, funnily enough, my mentor is someone who's in her late 70s and was a real maverick and owned one of the first tech companies in wow. Canada. Interesting. So, yeah, so it's kind of cool, you know. And the one thing I, I must admit is I really feel that mentorship is a real untapped resource for us all. You know, we, we're, we're very uh, hesitant to ask for help or we're very hesitant to say, I don't really know, uh, you know, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, I'll have to get back to you. We don't really have a support system, especially for women. We feel like we have to know it all. You know, you got to be the super mom. You have to be a great wife, a great mother, you know, a great daughter, a great sister. Um, and in addition to that, be an amazing entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a lot of job, buckle, uh, balls to be juggling and a lot of pressure. Yeah. So I think if we just really be honest with ourselves and what we can accomplish and really be fair with our time, as well as be authentic with our purpose, then it's all going to kind of come together. I agree. And you know, it, I, I believe it's interesting to share your authenticity and mentor others. Mm -hmm. If you're not there yourself, like you can only give what you, yep. you know, you can only give, you can only love as much as you love yourself and, and, and so forth. So I feel like up until recently, a lot of people, women, um, were protecting their, their knowledge. Absolutely. And it was, there was a lot more competition, like competing Absolutely. with our sisters rather than elevating our sisters. And I, I really feel that's a big part of this movement is we're starting to lift each other up and say, you go for it. You've got it. Run with it. You know, so yeah. that's a I, I think maybe part of that too comes from uh, business experience. Confidence. Yeah. 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 So you know, being that you came from a background where you were always fitting into probably a bit of a man's world, I would, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And now you're more authentically embracing the beauty of who you are. Are you able to share with us something that a lot of people might not know about you? Um, well, you know, I've just started talking about the corporate burnout issue because, uh, you know, I say that uh, I had my first instance of corporate burnout in 2008. And funnily enough, I, um, I, I clearly didn't learn all the lessons because I had my second bout of corporate burnout a few years ago. And, you know, there was a time when we didn't talk about those things because that was considered a huge weakness. And I think now we have to be able to share with other entrepreneurs and people in general, because there's just as many men who are feeling the pressures um, that women have felt for all of those years. And I think, I think that would be the, the, the biggest reveal for me is that... Um, Corporate burnout is something that really catches, sneaks up with you. And it's because you're running, I use, I use the saying, you know, I'm running at Mach 2 with my hair on fire, you know, mm -hmm. serving my clients, making sure that they're well supported and always putting yourself on the back burner. And it takes a lot of discipline to be able to say, wait a second, I need to take a deep breath. I need to step back for a minute and I need to take a little bit of time to look after me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a learning that took uh, quite a while for me to actually get a grasp of that because being successful is a, a different definition for each individual entrepreneur. You know, some people, it's the dollars and cents in the bank account that makes them successful. For other people, it's connections with their community. 
you know, for others, it's the collaboration that they get in working with other entrepreneurs. Um, and I personally think it's a combination of all of those things. I don't think there's any one thing for me that's more important than the other. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to learn to put myself sometimes ahead of um, my own goals and objectives to make sure that I took care of me. Which would be really challenging to do in that environment because that's not acceptable. Exactly. And I feel like we could almost address or mirror the same sort of concept in the profession that we're now holding in the coaching environment that we are very careful not to um, suffer from compassion fatigue. Yes. Which would be, uh, you know, sort of a complement to corporate burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, the the instance of uh, compassion fatigue, of course, is much higher in these industries as well. For sure, for yeah. sure, very, uh, very well, sort of mirrored. One mirrors the other, I think. You know. Yes. Um, so even if you're in a larger organization and you have a larger leadership team that is looking to you for guidance and support, it's no different than the client base that you may have in the industry that we're in. Absolutely. Yeah. So tapping into that and, and bringing that awareness to our fellow sisters, I think is also part of this journey. It's very important. Absolutely. I, I know I was diagnosed twice, so I clearly didn't learn the first time as well with compassion fatigue, where I literally had nothing left to give. Right. And I was like, oh, there's a label for it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So share with us one more time. We now know the portal by which you um, access your greatness, which is mm -hmm. authenticity. Mm -hmm. So the vehicle by which you're taking out, out it out into the world is, or are in your you, case. <laughs> you know what? I would have to say the Share Your Story series because I'm really trying to encourage other people to step into their own power and share their story. And they all answer three questions. You know, tell me a little bit about your journey. When was your light bulb moment? And what are your three words of advice? Because I think that those are all really very important things if we're thinking about making a career change even, or if we're going to take that side hustle into something full time, um, or even if you're going to start a new initiative, you know, it takes a lot of resilience and a lot of courage to be able to step off what I call it the yellow brick road, you know, that path mm -hmm. that we sort of seem to follow that is supposed to lead to, to greatness. Sometimes we have to take a step off the path and find something a little bit different. So for me, it's the Share Your Story series because I'm really hoping that it, uh, it's a great way to support and learn from each other. Absolutely. And we will make sure that that is made available with this interview, thank you. the link thank to you. it. Yes, thank you. So um, what is the message, the overarching message that you would want people to hear from you that might be listening to our interview would be? I would say that mentorship is an untapped resource for all of us and that if we share and support each other through mentorship, it's going to help accelerate all of our paths for success. I'm, I'm in 100%. I love <laughs> mentoring people. Yeah, for it's sure. important. It is important it is. for sure. Yeah, and it's an, it's, a, it's an example of giving back because somewhere along the line, someone mentored me or several people mentored me and eventually it becomes time for you to do the same. And, you know, I think it, it breaks the age, the gender uh, gap, you know, I mean, I am not a technology wizard at all. So for me, if I wanted to really move into an area that, you know, more and more we're having to use technology platforms like we're using today. So yeah. I might have someone much younger than myself helping to mentor me in technology um, so that I become more familiar and comfortable with the platform. So it's one of those things that it's really experience based. It's not based on your age. Um, it's just based on how willing you are to share and whether or not you really enjoy and have a passion for what you do and you're hoping to help others. So I think that's really the secret to it. And how open you are to learning. And yes, yeah. for sure. For and sure. what about in this crazy time right now with the coronavirus? Mm -hmm. What would be your powerful and inspiring um, piece of information you would share? You know, I think that I would say that we're all in this together and we're all gonna be given a second chance to be quite honest too take a look at what's really important to reassess our values and realign all of those goals and objectives and maybe make some really cool lifestyle changes as a result of being able to sort of sit back and take a pause and uh, just reconvene on what really is important. Yeah, like a massive global reset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mother Earth is trying to tell us something. It's just whether or not we're going to listen. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So thank you so much for um, 
allowing us to step into your life a little bit today and for sharing your incredible wisdom and experience and background with us. Um, I am definitely going to be reaching out to you. I, I'm really intrigued with the, I know you're a big part of the ICF. Uh, actually, CCF. CCF. The Certified Coaches CCF. Federation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've actually just started certifying um, other folks who are interested in the coaching business. So I was approached by CCF and I am helping uh, other folks start a, a business in coaching. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. And, and technically, you should be able to do that all remotely. Yes, uh, we do do live in um, sort of in-person workshops, but there is an online uh, program that's also available. So you have lots of options and there's lots of dis different facilitators all across the country. So depending on your particular geographic area, there's lots of opportunity for you to make a one-to-one -one connection with uh, a workshop facilitator in your area. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here today, for sharing your wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you. um, we will be in touch. Thank and you so much for sharing your story, Mia. It was really wonderful to be able to uh, share your story and learning and uh, your three words of advice as well. So thank you so much for participating in the series. You're very welcome. Take good care and stay safe. You too. Okay. Thank you bye so bye. much. Bye now. Bye.